from Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Well, we're all back from Brussels after that 38-minute summit yesterday, and gosh, didn't all the other EU leaders look pleased? Off they went for their Sunday lunches. Having not had to do too much work, it had all been agreed. That, some say, was the easy bit. Now... It's sales time. It's Theresa May's Black Friday moment. And it begins today and it will go on and on and on. She's about having spoken to the House of Commons today. Oh, and by the way, you had to wait a very, very long time to find any member of Parliament that has actually stood up and supported her. But she now will go on a tour, we're told, to all four parts of the United Kingdom. And then the great Brexit debate in the House of Commons itself. It'll be debated on Tuesday the 4th, Wednesday the 5th, Thursday the 6th, Monday the, 11th, Monday the 10th, and then Tuesday the 11th. And the vote, the meaningful vote, is going to take place on the 11th of December. That's just over two weeks from now. So, beginning her great sales pitch, this was Theresa May at half past three this afternoon in the House of Commons. Mr Speaker, this is the right deal for Britain because it delivers on the democratic decision of the British people. It takes back control of our borders, mm. it ends the free movement of people in full really? once and for all, allowing the government to introduce a new skills-based immigration system. It takes back control of our laws, it really? ends the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice no, in the doesn't. UK, and means instead of our laws be instead our laws being made in our parliaments enforced by our when? courts. And it takes back control of our money. It ends the vast annual payments we send to Brussels. So instead, we can send, spend taxpayers' money on our own priorities, including the £394 million a week of extra investment into our long-term well, plan is pleased, for the anyway. Health Service. By creating a new free trade area with no tariffs, fees, charges, quantitative restrictions or rules of origin checks, this deal protects jobs, including those that rely on integrated supply chains. It protects our security with a close relationship on defence and on tackling crime and terrorism, which will help to keep all our people safe. And it protects the integrity of our United Kingdom, meeting our commitments in Northern Ireland and delivering for the whole UK family, including our overseas territories and the Crown dependencies. There you go. It's absolutely wonderful. Everything's solved. It's just that actually nothing is. Just remind ourselves, folks, what was agreed yesterday is a legally binding withdrawal agreement, all right? Added to which was a future political declaration, which actually has no force of law whatsoever. And what we have agreed to is to give away somewhere between 40 and 60 billion pounds to be in this next phase the next transition phase to the end of 20 or as she's already said perhaps the end of 2021 although the eu are now talking about the end of 2022 during which time there will be no changes at all to uh, free movement at our borders there'll be no possibility of signing free trade deals with the rest of the world what she was saying this afternoon is a wish list for what she thinks she may get at the end of all of this but there's a problem and the real problem is the backstop which she commented on today mr speaker i do not pretend that either we or the eu are entirely happy with these arrangements <laughs> and that's how it must be <laughs> were either party entirely happy that party would have no incentive to move on to the future relationship. But there is no alternative deal that honours our commitments to Northern Ireland which does not involve this insurance policy, and the EU would not have agreed any future partnership without it. Put simply, there is no deal that comes without a backstop, and without a backstop there is no deal. Well, the backstop, of course, is the means by which the European Union effectively can annex... Northern Ireland can, can hive it off from the United Kingdom and treat it differently. But because, of course, the Prime Minister has DUP support and has to maintain the integrity of the entire United Kingdom, uh, effectively the backstop would hive, hive off the whole of the United Kingdom. It's something we should never have signed up to. She talks about incentives. There is now, if this withdrawal agreement 
passes through the House of Commons, there is now no incentive, none, for the European Union to give us anything. Because they're not committed to giving us anything. And this, I think, indirectly was, you know, a point that was raised by member after member. Why are we giving away all this money? I, I have to say, uh, when I saw President Macron last night, shortly after the conference had ended, saying that we'll threaten them with the backstop unless we get continued French access to British fisheries, I think, folks, that's what's going to happen for the next few years. We are going to be the EU's whipping boy, and they'll threaten us again and again and again with the backstop. Well, Jeremy Corbyn gave the response for the opposition, and I have to say, he did end in pretty spirited style. Many people who voted Remain voted for an outward-looking and inclusive society, and they fear this deal, and they fear the rhetoric of the Prime Minister in promoting this deal. Likewise, many people from areas that voted Leave feel this deal We're all has unhappy. betrayed the Brexit they voted for, it does not take back control, it will not make them better off, and it will not solve the economic deprivation that affects yes. far too many communities yes. and towns and cities across this country. Yes. This deal is not a plan for Britain's future. So, for the good of the nation, the House has very little choice but to reject this deal. Well, that was pretty clear, wasn't it? That was as clear as it could be. Labour is voting against this deal. There was some speculation yesterday about whether they maybe could think about abstaining and let the Tory party tear chunks out of each other and sort it out that way. But no, he made it clear they're going to vote against. It then went to questions, and, and I give her credit for one thing. You know, she does stand there and take a lot of questions and a lot of stick. In fact, the only person I saw being vaguely supportive was Nicky Morgan. Um, of the questions that were asked, the critical questions that were asked, I thought actually Jacob Rees-Mogg's question really hit the nail on the head. Uh, may I first of all thank my right honourable friend for making three statements to the House of Commons in ten days, which I think is boycottian in its achievement. <laughs> uh, to an earlier question, the Prime Minister said that we had a legal obligation to pay £39 billion. I wondered if she's forgetting the report of the House of Lords from March 2017 that said in the event of leaving without a deal, we owed no money at all. Quite. Therefore, what are we buying with £39 billion <laughs> of taxpayers' money? Uh, can, I, can I assure my honourable friend that I have not forgotten the House of Lords report, uh, but there is a different opinion in relation to the House of Lords report, and that opinion is that there are legal obligations that this country would hold to the European Union in relation to financial payments in any circumstances. As I've said before, I think it's important that we are a country that upholds our legal obligations. Yeah, yeah. So it's £40 billion that she's agreed to, but if the transition's extended, and don't forget she's asked already for one year, and the Commissioner prepared a grant two years, that would be probably another, let's call it £30 billion between friends. And if then they won't let us out of the customs arrangements, we could be paying a net £15 billion a year, maybe £20 billion a year for, well, I should be long retired. And that's the problem with this deal. It leaves us trapped, and that's why I am so strongly opposed to it, even though... It does technically get us out of the European Union on March the 29th. It's even worse than Brexit in name only. But you've heard from the Prime Minister. She's about to go out round the country. We're going to have five full days of debate in the House of Commons. Can she convince you that this is the best deal possible? 0345 6060 973. You can text your views to 84850. You can tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC and LBC and of course Facebookers. You can comment there too. Let's ask Chris in Fulham. Chris, do you think she's going to sell you this as the best deal possible? She's got more chance of selling the back of the water to a drowning man. Oh. Um, so you're feeling somewhat I'm, negative, Chris, about this deal, are you? Yeah, that's uh, that's the nicest negativity I can give on air. Yeah. Uh, I'm disgusted by the deal that she's come back with and concerned. I spoke to you some weeks ago and said I was concerned that we left the Remainer in charge. I remember, of, yeah. Negotiating a, a, a Brexit. This is a Brexit in name only. It's a... It, 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 and the, the damage that it does, or it can do in the future, as you so eloquently pointed out, 
We've, we, this is a legally binding agreement yep. that, that keeps us in the withdrawal process with a piece of toilet paper written on in the back that maybe we'll do this if we can get that later on. We've already had Spain mumbling about Gibraltar. Yep. Macron is going on about the fisheries. Yep. Denmark... Uh, and Iceland, uh, I've mentioned the fisheries as well. And it's only just, Chris, it's only just started. Imagine what the next three years is going to bring us. Well, listen, I, I'm, I'm very worried for our country, Nigel. Very, no. very okay. worried. And I'm more worried than I have been since the start of this. And I think what needs to happen now is it needs to be rejected. Yep. I'm, pl- I'm, I'm, I'm one... A bit of hope is that Corbyn has actually rejected it now, publicly. <laughs> yeah, he has, and he can't really go back on that. Chris, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to move on to Ian, who's a new caller from Centre Staff. Where's that, Ian? Well, I'm, I'm in North Wales at the moment, Nigel. North Wales, OK. I'm, I live in Bolton. I'm from the beautiful town of Bolton that you I know enjoy. it very well. I know it very well, yeah. <laughs> so, come on, Ian. Is she, is she going to... And you're living in North Wales now, and she's going to come mm. to Wales. Is she going to sell you this deal on the basis... And you may not like the deal, but the argument she's going to put is that this is the best and the only deal possible, and that if we don't buy into it, there may be no Brexit. Well, you, you know, Nigel, Juncker must be running back to the EU Commission today with it, rubbing his hands together, saying, you know what, guys, I've, great, I've, been that, I've done that Black Friday in the UK. <laughs> I've just got myself a bog off. I, I, I reckon he was stretching out last night, actually. He'd have been <laughs> celebrating <laughs> so <laughs> heavily. <laughs> so it's a disaster, Ian, in your view. Nigel, I, I'm just I'm fed up with this skirmongering. Michael Gove's at it again today. All our water will be purified, unless, which is a load of rubbish. I oh, work yeah. for a chemical company. <clears throat> I know about chemicals. The hexafluorosilicic acid that they put in it, nothing to do with bacteria. It's a, it's a fluoridation chemical. <clears throat> so all the all this that is nonsense about Mike Gove saying, "Oh, it's a flood," <clears throat> it's you know you, you're not going to get pure water. It's just more skirmongering for me. You've had um, enough, Ian. You've had enough. So you want this? So you want Parliament to reject this deal? Oh, absolutely. I, right. Not only reject it, I want us. An, why? Why can't we have a no deal? Why can't we? Um, May said, "No deal is better than a bad deal." Well, she didn't she mean it. Giving us a bad deal. She didn't mean it. She didn't mean it. That's the problem. Ian, thank you for that, and thank you for telling us about. And you're right. Today's scare story was there'll be no safe drinking water if we leave with no deal. It gets worse and worse and worse. Theresa May shag- deal shackles us to the EU, and she expects everyone's support. Is this a joke? Says Richard. Michael says, "I listen to Theresa May, and I don't believe a word." Not one single word. Come on, there must be some big May supporters out there. There must be some big supporters for this deal out there. Only Nicky Morgan in Parliament managed to support it. Surely somebody out there thinks this deal's worth buying. 0345 6060 973. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's 6.15 and time for the news headlines with Lisa Aziz. For decades, I've argued that one of the key reasons to leave the European Union was because of fishing, not just because I'm a sea angler who now finds himself wrapped in so many EU rules I really question on the odd day off I get whether it's worth actually going, but of course because of what we've lost in terms of our own commercial fishing industry. And it's interesting, I said the day after the referendum that I thought fisheries would be the acid test of Brexit. Would we take back control of our territorial waters at the end of the Article 50 process? Well, here was, and it's interesting, so many other people now are talking about fishing, including the Prime Minister, who made a big thing of it in her speech today. It ensures that we will leave EU programmes that do not work in our interests. So we will be out of the common agricultural policy that has failed our farmers, and out of the common fisheries policy Mm -hmm. that has failed our coastal communities. Sounds great. Instead... Instead, as the political declaration sets out, we will be an independent coastal state once again. (laughs) We will take back full sovereign control over our waters, so we will be able to decide for ourselves who we allow to fish in our waters. So what she's saying is in the political declaration, which I called the child's wish list to Father Christmas, we'll be taking back control of our waters. Well, Jeremy Corbyn picked up on this point. He was not in the least bit convinced. The President of France, President Macron, has already made clear Mm, what his priorities will be in in negotiating Britain a future deal. On Sunday he said, we will concentrate our efforts in order to obtain access to the British waters before the end of the transition period. And of course, all our fishermen will be protected. 
Isn't it the case that under the Prime Minister's botched deal, we will have to agree to those demands on access to waters and quota shares if we want to finalise a future trade deal or extend the transition? Amazing. Other people, too, now think we should leave the CFP, including, and I almost couldn't believe it, the SNP have argued for years that it's better to stay in the, C- in, in the CFP and argue from within, but Ian Blackford today, their leader, said this. Here we are again with another sellout to the Scottish fishing industry by a Tory government. Well, we've been here before. We were sold out by Ted Heath and we've been sold out repeatedly by Tory governments. Well, I'm delighted with that because I've battled hard with the SNP telling me I was wrong. So everybody agrees we've got to get back control of our fisheries. Uh, the Prime Minister says it's going to happen. She was ever so confident. Well, that was politicians. I'm going to go very quickly to a representative from the fishing industry, June in Lowestoft. June, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Now, you, ru- you run a fish market, is that right? Yes, yeah, so I, I run one of the last show auctions in Lowestoft on the east coast of England. Yeah, so you must be thrilled. When the Prime Minister tells you that we're leaving the common fishery, I suppose, great news for you guys, isn't it? No, she, she's just, well, she's just lied and lied and backtracked. Mm. The whole Strong two stuff. and a half years, that is all that woman has done. She's let us down very, very badly. I've been in negotiation talks with fishermen since Friday. Very sad. I had one young lad in tears that he'd just uh, gone to the bank and borrowed her some money. I think with Corbyn and the rest of the, the guys you were just mentioning... You know, do the EU demand and do they surrender their national resources for market access? No. Does any other nation give up give up fisheries access and resources? No. And I think with the help of you and other people, we've done a real strong battle this two and a half years. Mm. We really have, you know, different fishing societies, uh, UKIP, have been absolutely marvellous. And this has rubbed off onto other people, hence Labour, DUP. We, we're all, we all realise that those waters are so important. They are, the, they are, well, basically, we have the crown and we are throwing the emeralds and diamonds so, over there. So, so, well, June, we so, so, so June, what happens, you know, 29th of March, we leave the European Union... What changes will you see in the industry the next day? Well, it won't be. We, uh, we leave, but then we'll just join back into, into the same thing. We, we need to get out of this, Nigel, quick. We right. have no deal. Yep. I, I, well, I know people look at the GDP fishing and they'll say, I get it all the time, well, isn't he worth this? Isn't he worth that because we've allowed it to become so poor? $6.4 billion this we worth to our economy. economy. Will there be skilled jobs, improving living standards, helping the deprived areas? The gravy train is massive. Well, why can't this woman see that? Well, June, uh, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. But I think, uh, frankly, the worst of it is she keeps pretending that it's all sold for our fisheries. And as you say, the day after we leave and enter transition, we're arguably in a worse place than we are now because at the annual quota setting negotiations, we won't even be there to fight our corner. June, thank you, and I'm sorry for the travails of your industry. And, and June used the word lying. I will just say duplicitous. Let's keep going. Let's go to Martin in Glasgow. Martin, when she gets to Scotland... Is she going to be able to sell this deal? No, it'll be rotten tomatoes, to be honest with you, Nigel. Really? I've never seen so many disgusting lies in my life from one person. And I'll tell you what's happened here. She's done this deliberately. It's all been planned, this. This bad deal. She, she must have known Parliament will vote against this, which will probably happen. When they vote against it, there'll be these big debates, or we should have the people's vote, or worse still, in my case, let's not have Brexit. It's all been done deliberately. And I'll tell you one thing, I voted Conservative up here last year because there's nobody else, really. As quite a lot of people did, Martin. I mean, they won 13 seats in Scotland, well, didn't they, they? they? they did, Nigel, but I'll tell you right now, never, never till I die will I vote Conservative ever again. Mm. I am disgusted. Given, g- given your level of suspicion about her motives, well, do, do you think it's possible, Martin, mm-hmm. that she might, on the 11th of December, say to the House of Commons, OK... You've got two choices. One is you support my deal or it's a second referendum. Do you think she could stoop to that? Yes, I do. I think that's, that's the plan, Nigel. There's mm, no doubt it may how, well can, be. how can a politician not see what Parliament's going to vote? It's quite obvious. 
That's This has been done deliberately. And how anybody can come on this phone and defend that woman is well, beggar's belief. Well, so me. far, Martin, I can't find them, and you're certainly not one of them. Thank you. Remember, Theresa May supporters, deal supporters, are people who think it is, whether you like it or not, the best deal possible. 0345 6060 Esau is calling from Basildon. Good evening to you. Yellow Nigel, um, it's my first time to talk to you. Well, welcome. Thank you. I'm trying to find out, Nigel, uh, all this time you you campaigned to go out of, 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 of uh, you campaigned for Brexit. Yes. And um, you successfully got it and went with the help of the Conservatives. And at the end of the day, uh, the, the deal has now been signed. Rather, the deal is now on the table. Mm-hmm. And all the Brexiteers are simply saying, oh, oh, it's a bad deal, it's a bad deal. There's not one of you has come up with an alternative. Well, Esau, Number two, Esau yes, no, 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 come on. Uh, that's not fair or not true. Uh, many of us have argued for a simple free trade agreement, and many of us argued that if they don't want to do that, we will leave on WTO terms. And here's my point to you, right? Yeah. We understood that there was an Article 50 process. We understood because we'd read it, that it would take up to two years for us to leave. All right? We are leaving, if this deal passes, the treaties of Rome and its subsequent amendments on the 29th of March. But the day after that, nothing changes. We still go on paying money. We still have open borders. We still have no control over our fisheries. And this is the point, Esau. We are not actually leaving next year. No, 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 no. Let me put it this way. Mm. You already know it's a marked period that you're going to leave, or, you know, you're going to have this time to this time in order to leave. You already know that. That was Article so, 50, Esau. That was the two-year Article 50 period. Now we're, being no told it's a, now we're being told it's a further three years, but we can't even leave at the end of that with this deal unless they agree. No, 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 no. If the, the Europe is saying you are coming out in two, three years, it's still saying you are coming out. There wow. is no such thing as the, the, the Europeans saying, oh, we'll tie you in even if after three years. No. Secondly, I heard you talk about Corbyn. I, I think Corbyn is the worst politician in this country. I've never voted um, conservative. I've always, always voted uh, Labour. Mm-hmm. But once Corbyn was asked on, on television, what will happen? Are you going to press the button when there's, there's a need for a button to be pressed to protect I know, the, I know. the population of this country? He was just I, I know, but that's a slightly separate issue. Um, the, the one issue I'd take with Corbyn today is he did argue we should stay part of a customs union and single market deal. So Corbyn too is breaking his promise that he made in the run-up to the last general election. Thank you very much indeed uh, for your call. And, and, and if only we were leaving. Uh, if only on March the 30th, we were back in control of fisheries and everything else. But we're not going to be. And we could be stuck in this never-never land for goodness knows how long. Not acceptable in my view. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC at 6.30 in time for the news with Lisa Aziz. Well, Theresa May is obviously desperate to get her deal through, uh, and we learnt that this is to be, the next couple of weeks, like a mini general election campaign. And the Telegraph broke the story this morning that the Prime Minister sees a prime-time Sunday night debate against Jeremy Corbyn as a means of persuading the public. That's what we learnt first thing this morning. Well, very, very quickly, the Labour leader shot back and accepted... Of course, remember, it was Theresa May who didn't want to do the TV debates at the last general election. So the odd thing is, we get this briefing, the Prime Minister wants a head-to-head with Corbyn, Corbyn responds yes, and since then we've heard nothing. Absolutely nothing. But now everybody wants to get involved in this debate. But what would be the point of this debate? I mean, would Mrs May, a Remainer, pretend to be a Lever... And would Jeremy Corbyn, a Remainer, who's been a Lever for the last 30 years, I mean, what would he pretend to be? What would be the point of this debate? Um, I, I, I really, I'm not sure we'd achieve very much from it at all. Although, generally, I'm for debates. But I think you'd probably need to have uh, somebody who was for leaving genuinely and for staying genuinely. And then you might actually get um, a bit more objectivity. And also, so keen is she to get through uh, this this uh, next couple of weeks that she gave out a knighthood 
on Friday. John Hayes, long-term MP from Lincolnshire, junior minister for eight years, suddenly it gets announced that Eurosceptic John Hayes is to be knighted and everyone goes mad. The SNP's Nicola Sturgeon said it brings the whole system into disrepute and Marc Francois, Tory MP, said you could write down the principles that Hayes has on the back of a postage stamp and on it goes Labour criticised it and everybody assumed that John Hayes had been bought off with a peerage to support the May deal only for us to hear John Hayes say he will still not support the planned deal as it stands in Parliament so even at the moment knighthoods don't appear to be working so Ben in Chatham says to me Nigel the long and short of it is that this groundbreaking decision, and it needs all Brits to buy into Mrs May's deal, it's the best we can get before the haggling starts. Suck it up and enjoy. Vassal life, here we come. (laughs) The haggling starts. The other side don't need to haggle at all. All they need to do is threaten us. And Monsieur Macron has started this already. I'll be very interested. I'm going to Brussels this week. Uh, I think sort of 75% certain there's going to be a debate with Monsieur Barnier on Thursday morning, and we'll see just how much crowing there is around the room. So, who supports this deal? I'm off to Pisa in Italy to speak to Catherine, who I've spoken to before. Hi, Catherine. Good evening, Mr Farage. I don't think we have spoken before, actually. Right. Do you, uh, do you been support- following yeah go on I've obviously been following the whole debate mm-hmm. uh, the referendum uh, in which unfortunately I was excluded and so that has obviously Be- led me to question the whole democ- democratic so process how, how long have you lived abroad place. how long have you lived abroad 31 years oh well that, so you 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 get a vote for up to 15 years don't you Yes, this is correct. Even though we were promised a vote uh, by the uh, by an earlier government, but that promise fell through. Okay. Um, I have to say that under the circumstances, Mrs. May's deal was the only thing she could do. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the face of so many uh, angry voices against the European Union, I took up leave to uh, take up my right to take up opportunities, that's a lot of takes, but you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. uh, to work in the European Union as a European citizen. I now see that right uh, being taken away from me. Um, There are a group of us, a great number of us, who have been left in the dark, up the proverbial creek without any paddle. Um, A certain responsibility for that lies with you, Mr. Farage. Okay. And um, Um, I sincerely hope... Catherine, hang on, hang on. I sincerely hope Hang on, hang on. People were working, Catherine. I mean, there were as many people, as many British people working in Germany in 1972 before we joined the European Union as there were in 1992... 20 years after we join. You don't have to be a member of the European Union to work in another country, do you? To live here legally, at the moment, uh, on a, a, if no deal comes about, mm-hmm. on the 29th of March, we will become illegal residents. Well, now, ca- that, ca- Catherine, that, don't we have a very strong position it? here? Don't we have a very strong position here? That for every one British person passport holder that there is living in Europe there are between three and four EU citizens living in the UK and that actually right. and that actually you know the one thing and interestingly you know I said well a year before Mrs May said this I said we should or the, the one big offer we should make at the start of this process is to offer rights for EU citizens who've legally come into the United Kingdom and that reciprocity uh, would follow and, and it always struck me that, that was the common sense thing to do from day one well, it would ap- appear to everybody that that would be the common sense mm. approach. Uh, but what's happened to that common sense approach? What's happened well, to the value of free movement in Europe? Oh, we don't want it, Catherine. Mr. Farrar, we don't want it. That, that, no, that no, no, Catherine, we don't want the it. Peace of Europe, because when people start looking for faults, when they start criticising mm. their their reality and looking to blame others, that that unleashes 
terrible forces, Mr. For, Farage. Well, if and you want to look, hold you if you want to look that. at new political forces, I would argue, Catherine, they've been caused by free movement. Look at Germany. Look at Sweden. Look at what is happening, and look across the entire Western world. So but, you're you're saying to me that people who move to far other countries to look for opportunity are. Are the causes of racism? Oh, I think there's absolutely no question that we have seen the birth of new political movements because of excess free movement of people uh, that has brought with it cultural change, etc. Yeah, absolutely, no question about it. There is no question that Mrs Merkel's career uh, will end on a very low note because of what she did in terms of the issue of immigration. And that, and that actually, because of free movement, uh, many of those who've come to Germany are now being asked to be taken up by the rest of Europe. Catherine, I can't discuss free movement any longer with you. I understand your point of view. You're, you know, we both have a different point of view. I'm off to Grimsby, a fishing port, to speak to John, who's a new caller. Hi, John. Hi there, Nigel. So, I can call you Nigel, can I? You certainly can. So, John, uh, Grimsby used to... Ha I think we used to have 350 boats in there, about eight now, something like that. Yeah, the distant water fleet was killed off years ago, but yes. uh, that was the Icelandic gunboats, of course. Now yes. it's a big food processing town. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of money invested into it, helping out uh, the local people. But it's really Brexit city around here. They voted firmly for Brexit. Mm. I'm a staunch Remainer. Yep. Always have been. Mm -hmm. um, um, what, what makes me laugh is they're crying about wanting a free port now. I mean, this is, this is the town that wanted virtually no deal. Let's get out of the EU. And they're already moaning because they can see what's going to happen. But what makes me laugh at Brexit people like you is that Project <laughs> Fear is becoming Project Fact. Just as it, it was pointed out to you. What in, um, what in particular, what in particular John? Do you think any of this is of any use to this country. So, so John, let crazy. me tell you, let me ask you, John, would a, an, a, and you mentioned Icelandic gunboats, and without getting too technical on this, that changed the international law. Up until that moment, we had 12 miles of waters we could call our own. We now have 200. Do you think 200 miles off Grimsby as an exclusive economic zone, rather like Norway, fish. rather There's like Norway... industry left. Well, it doesn't well, fish. Because it's been it's, destroyed, it's John. It's all imported over land, but that's John, irrelevant. John, if we, uh, let me ask the question again. If we had 200 miles of the North Sea off Grimsby that was ours to fish and manage, just like Norway on the other side, do you not accept that would be a boom for Grimsby? Not necessarily, no, because really? it's changed its outlook. It's, it's modernised itself. I tell you what, I John. Mean, is, I tell you what, John. This is little England approach. You people make me I'd, laugh. You're I tell really you what, John. I'd really, invest in really Grimsby. You really love yourselves, don't you? I, I'd invest in trouble. Grimsby. I'd this invest in Grimsby. You don't care about Grimsby, do you? You care about Remain. I'm, 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 I'm telling you how your town could be radically transformed and you don't want to listen. It's been radically transformed. Where have you been? Oh, you don't think we Remainers are going to go away, by the way, dear? And we've listened to your clap clap for the last 20 years. Well, the thing You're is, John... you hear from us now. The thing is, John, there aren't many of you. Away, you know. But there aren't many of you, really, are there? Well, <laughs> oh, I'd, like to, I'd like to test that out. Although, let me just nail my colours to the mask. I don't believe in referendums. This is a I parliamentary bet. democracy, all right? So there's no second referendum. Don't, don't think for a minute that I want that to happen, because I don't believe in it. We're stuck with it now. We're going to have to leave. And people like you and Boris Johnson, who was a Remainer, then changed his coat, is going to have to step up now and stop being cowards and get this sorted out. You can't sort it out because you said we hold all the cards. We do. Guess what? We haven't We're played wrong. them. We haven't played John, we haven't played <laughs> them. But now, now let, let me ask you, John, one quick final question. Do you want this deal, as it is, to go through the House of Commons? Do you believe it's the best you could have done? Oh, but you've got Gina Miller to thank, and the enemies of the people, by the way, that there's any parliamentary debate going on. You do know that, don't you? Otherwise, well, she could have done, done this on the knob. And that's another thing that you... Brexit John, did. I'm going to ask you one more time. I'm running out of time. One more time. Yeah. Do you think Parliament should... Given where we are, do you think Parliament should pass this deal? No, I don't, because it's rubbish. All right, OK, thank you. Well, there we are. There is agreement there with Johnny Grimsby on something... Everybody, and I know Catherine and Italy's concerned, but actually, 
<laughs> I'm not worried about that. You know, people could live in Italy before 1972 without any problem at all. But it seems there is unanimity of view. The deal is rubbish. The deal should be junked. What on earth is Mrs May going to do on this tour around the country to convince you? Somebody, please somebody tell me it's a good deal. 0345 6060 You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's now 6.46 and time for the news headlines with Lisa Aziz. Last I found somebody who thinks it's a good deal. Trevor by text says this is a fantastic deal. If you're from the EU. <laughs> so there we are, even Trevor, not on site. Let's have a bit of happier news from all this discord, shall we? Jacob Rees Mogg earlier made a, a, a sort of Jeffrey Boycott metaphor when he was talking to the Prime Minister. Well, this morning in Sri Lanka, our cricket team finished off the series winning 3 0. It's the first time since 1963, before I was born, that we've won a clean sweep on a tour overseas. There we are, we're doing well at cricket. Cheer up, everybody. Now, Chris is a new caller from Coulston. Chris, come on, tell me this is a great deal. Nigel, good evening. Good evening. Um, sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Uh, but uh, you were talking about the fishing industry just before the break. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, you and I met uh, in East Kent, a sandwich, in um, 2015 when you were standing for Senate South. OK. In the general election. Yeah. Um, a lot of water's gone under the bridge since then. Plenty has. Pl- Plenty uh, has. Chris, um, well, it's uh, clearly on fishing. I mean, you've got what Mrs May's saying, but even Jeremy Corbyn and others saying this is absolute rubbish. We had June on, who owns the fish market up in Lowestoft. So clearly on fishing, uh, this doesn't really deliver anything other than a sort of hope for the future. But, Chris, what do you want to see Parliament do? Well, uh, uh, May's deal is, is definitely a, a sellout. Um, I mean, even her foreign secretary, who is a Remainer, has mm. described it as a turkey trap. It's actually a sort of bunch of turkey traps. Um, Parliament, uh, well, uh, they'd be mad if they voted for it. But could it be, Chris, there's, could, do you think it's possible that Mrs May knows that and there is an agenda behind this? Yes. You see, I mean, Neil in Mill Hill sends me a message by text. He says, Theresa May knows this is a dead duck. She's just going to tread water for a couple of weeks. She knows it's going to be rejected. She's playing a game and knows exactly what she's doing. Do you think Neil's got a point? Yeah, yes, he could well have. Uh, she could be playing for time. Um, Lord uh, Kerr was on Sky News today saying that Article 50 could be extended mm. if, um, uh, if Mrs May asked for it, uh, the EU27 would probably accept it in the hope that we'd, uh, there'd be time for a referendum and uh, uh, the country would vote to remain. But Mrs May's told us again and again, Chris, no second referendum. Surely she wouldn't break her word, would she? Um, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. You're a leading light um, in Lead Means Leave and you represent... Uh, UKIP in the uh, European Parliament. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, not so long ago, you said that if uh, Brexit was going down the pan, Mm -hmm. you would act. So what's your plan? Well, I've been going out around the country campaigning, and I'm going to go out and do a whole load more of it. We're not sunk yet, Chris, but we're heading in the wrong direction. I thank you for your call. And on this point about being straight with the country, Nigel, we were all under the impression that the Prime Minister is a vicar's daughter... When is she going to start telling the truth, says Joe in Wales. Isn't much... Now, look, there must be somebody out there. Someone, somewhere, tell me this is a great deal. Tell me it's the best we could possibly get. And that's really the argument, isn't it? The Prime Minister will not argue it's a fantastic deal as the next two weeks go by. She'll argue it's the only one that was possible, I guess. Susa is a new caller from Scottish Borders. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. It's such a pleasure to uh, to meet uh, uh, to talk to you first of all. You know, <laughs> pleasure to have you on. <laughs> thank you. I'd just like to to thank you. You know, for all your commitments and courage of you know in all these years. So many people, or well, very few, know really what that meant for you and your family. So. Heads off and well, thanks a lot. Well, that's very sweet of you. But but but, <laughs> on, but on to where we are today. So, yes, is, is this the best deal she could possibly have got? Oh no, oh no. It, uh, you know what puzzles me in the first place, and that would be a question I would have 
for you is how could you know after all after this this great uh, victory uh, and, and th- this very brave decision of the British people fighting to get out of this EU concept their nepotism and, and deception and ignorance um, that was such a great victory how could um, the, the the Conservative Party install someone like May in the first place being a Remainer and then well, the, I know. you know I know. Watching all I know. This, you know so this is puzzling to me that this happened in the first place because Cameron stood back you know step back because of the uh, situation and um, it's, so Susan, it's, it's, it's been a nightmare and do you remember we were told that nothing has agreed until everything's agreed. Like, I, you know, so I was hoping to see some sort of big, you know, future plans linked to what we she'd agreed to pay. But actually, what we've done, and Jacob was right, we're paying away. Well, it's not; it's more like sixty billion. We're paying away a huge sum of money in return for a worthless piece of paper that isn't legally binding. I mean, it's awful, isn't it? If it is. It's repelling. I must say, and um, and you know, I think it's rather, it's rather a thing. It is rather, you know, be, one would be able to look through the whole concept as she was never convinced to, to fight for a good deal for, for Britain. Mm, and, and everyone let her go all that way. And now we are here you know, after two years. And, uh, and she is almost, you know, fighting her victory through, you know. Is that awful, Sue? She, she says, be. Susa, she says oh. that if this deal's rejected, she said today we're back to square one. Would you prefer to be at square one than where we are? <laughs> No, absolutely not. I think, um, I don't know, really. I think we should just drop her with the whole concept and leave without a deal. And, and Leave without a know, deal. Just, OK, absolutely, fine. Please. Thank you. Susan from the border says leave without a deal. Then leave really would mean leave, wouldn't it? I've got time for one last caller. I'm going to Sheffield to speak to Craig, who's a new caller. Good evening, Craig. Good evening, Nigel. Thank you. First time caller. Well, welcome on. Um, so, Craig, what do you, I mean, is, did she do the best she could do in difficult circumstances, in your view? I'd like to ask you a question, Nigel. Well, I just asked you one. Who asked her to get a deal? Well, well, uh, well, no, we, no, no, we well, 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 uh, well, according I, to, uh, I, 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 I don't want to deal. Uh, yeah, I'll on. leave outright. I never asked her for a deal. Who, the mandate from the people was leave the EU. Yes. Nobody, nobody. Asked her for a deal, and that is to, uh, it's an awful thing to go back on the people. We asked her to leave the EU and mandate, and she has not delivered what she said. I said, leave, I queued up at half past seven in the school and put that ballot paper, leave the EU. And I might add that when they talk about it, you didn't know what they were voting for on that ballot paper, it's got. These people, the experts who've researched this ballot paper and printed this ballot paper. They'll know exactly what it is I asked to leave, not get yep, the no, deal. No, no, Craig, we're, we're getting some very straight Yorkshire talking here, and I agree with you. We didn't vote for any kind of deal, we just voted to leave. If, we, if there was to be a deal, it's fine. And, you know, I coined the phrase in the last couple of weeks of that campaign, no deal is better than a bad deal. I meant it then. And I mean it now. Craig, thank you very much indeed for your call. Well, folks, it was very difficult to find anyone that supports this deal. It must be clear to Theresa May she's going to lose in the House of Commons. But does she, as many of you are beginning to think, have a plan B? Is she going to force us towards a second referendum or a suspension of Article 50? Well, she might. Wouldn't do the Conservative Party much good, though. I'm going to be back tomorrow night at 6. At 10 tonight, it's Tom Swarbrick. But up next, it's Ian Dale. Thank you very much, Nigel. Well, another Conservative MP has just announced that they're not voting for the deal. Tracy Crouch, she says on Facebook, having read through the draft withdrawal agreement and supporting documents and spending time talking to constituents, I've come to the conclusion that I cannot support the deal being pr- proposed by the prim- Prime Minister. I do not believe it delivers the Brexit that Chatham and Aylesford voted for, but also removes any certainty for our local businesses who trade with Europe. It's not been a good day for the Prime Minister. She was absolutely monstered in the Commons this afternoon. We're going to devote most of the programme to talking about what happens next. And is there anyone out there who supports Theresa May's Brexit deal? You've got three hours to tell me. Not holding my breath.